Hey everybody, it's Pastor Earhart here for another uh, edition of Small Catechism Tuesday. Today we're going to be getting back into the second article of the Apostles' Creed on the second person of the Trinity, the Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. So the second article of the Apostles' Creed is, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? Well, I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. So all that Jesus did in history, which the Gospels uh, record for us, which the epistles uh, proclaim to us, which we hear proclaimed from the pulpits of our churches week after week, all that Jesus did for us in history and time um, has uh, uh, implications and an effect on me today. Uh, he did all of this, uh, the small catechism teaches, so that I may be his own, that he uh, makes himself my Lord by his suffering and death on the cross. But that's not the end of the story because Jesus, after his rest in the tomb for parts of three days, rose from the dead. And the resurrection is the center of the entire Christian faith. St. Paul writes to the Corinthians that if Christ had not been raised from the dead, then our faith would be in vain. You know, if you worship a dead God, it doesn't do you too much good because you'll end up dead just like him. But Christ is not a dead God. He is risen. Uh, and even in this season of Lent, as we are preparing now uh, in a couple weeks to go into Holy Week and commemorate Jesus' death on the cross and his suffering uh, leading up to his death, we still remember that he is the risen Lord. So the resurrection is the center of the Christian faith, and everything else uh, is dependent upon that. Christ had not been raised, then uh, the rest of the Bible really doesn't matter. It's nice stories. But since Christ is raised, then it has some meaning and implications for me now and in the future. So the resurrection is the one historically verifiable fact of the Bible. Um, and you might say, well, that's kind of difficult to, to verify whether Christ has risen from the dead, especially when people don't rise from the dead all of the time. Uh, but it's not verifiable in the sense um, uh, that you're able to perform some kind of experiment. In fact, no historical event can be proven by setting up an experiment. Uh, everything in history uh, we know existed and happened uh, because of witnesses. Uh, we know that for instance, Alexander the Great lived and ruled uh, in history because we have witnesses. We have a recording of that. And um, many historical events don't have uh, many witnesses, but the, the resurrection of Jesus is different. Unlike uh, any other historical event, especially in the ancient world, um, we have a ton of witnesses of the resurrection. First of all, we have written witnesses. We have four Gospels each telling the story of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, each in a slightly different way, as a witness uh, might tell a story in a slightly different way um, as that person experiences it. We also have the letters of, of Paul and John and Peter and others who were involved in the early Christian church, James and Jude, uh, the writer to the Hebrews and so forth, um, all bear witness to the resurrection of Jesus. St. Paul also reminds us that uh, the uh, first witnesses to the resurrection were the women who were following Jesus, which if you're going to make up a story of Jesus rising from the dead and you wanted to give it credibility, 
in the ancient world, you wouldn't have women being the first witnesses of the resurrection, but Jesus chooses women as the first uh, to witness his resurrection. And then there are the 12 disciples who all witnessed the resurrection. None of them ever recanted their story, even under the threat of punishment and torture. And then St. Paul also says more than 500 others were eyewitnesses to the risen Jesus Christ. So with all of those witnesses, oh, and finally, Paul himself was a witness of the risen Christ as he appeared to him on the road to Damascus. So with all of those witnesses, either Christ truly rose from the dead, or all of those people colluded and pulled off the most elaborate hoax the world has ever seen. Because there is still not a body in a grave. Jesus' grave is empty. Even his enemies uh, attest to that. So either Christ is risen or these people pulled off the most incredible hoax the world has ever seen and no one was able to get even one of them to admit that they were lying. So Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. So why did he do this? Why did he suffer and die and then finally rise from the dead to ascend to, to God's right hand in heaven? Well, he did it uh, for me to be his own. He died and rose for me. It's a very personal faith. Um, yes, Jesus died for the sins of the whole world, but I am one of those people for whom he died. And so now he has made me, uh, he has made himself my Lord. And because uh, I have been baptized, because you have been baptized, we are joined not only to Christ's death on the cross, but also to his resurrection. And so we enjoy that same new life that Jesus lives. We are raised uh, to a new life here in time as we live for Christ in faith, but also as we anticipate the day when Christ returns, when he will raise all of the dead, and we will join him in a physical and bodily resurrection even as he is risen from the dead. So we keep that in mind here in this Lenten season, but especially as we look forward to uh, the, uh, the Paschal Feast and the Easter celebration that is to come in just a few short weeks. For our closing, we'll uh, use again Pastor Buto's uh, Catechism Prayer Book uh, for the second article of the Apostles' Creed, part of his prayer here. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Scriptures teach me that you died for me and rose, that I might no longer live for myself, but for you who died for me. Forgive me, Lord, for forgetting this, for ignoring it, for confessing your resurrection, but still living as if sin rules my life. Forgive me for celebrating Easter while still living toward you and others as if death matters. Such thinking causes me to despise your word and gifts, to think of them as being of no account. Such thinking causes me to despise others and to treat them as nothing more than hindrances to my own happiness. Lord, by the very same death and resurrection I confess in the creed, save me from these sins, save me from a false faith, which only makes your work into some sort of knowledge of ju or just facts and information. Rather, enlighten and enliven me by the Holy Spirit and your word and sacraments to truly believe and trust in your victory over sin and death. Let me learn to live with such a glad confidence in your finished work of salvation that every word, thought, and action gives you glory and serves and helps my neighbor. Lord, my sins trouble me. The devil seeks to rule my conscience and accuse me. The world and my sinful nature overwhelm me. Give me, by the faithful preaching of Christ crucified and risen, by the remembrance of my baptism, which makes your death and resurrection my own, by the absolution which bestows on me your saving forgiveness, by your body and blood by which you live in me. By these gifts give me true comfort and peace against all my enemies. By your word and gifts, Show me that in you I am truly righteous, innocent, innocent and blessed, now and for all eternity. All glory, honor, thanks, and praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for you have become man, taken my sins, died for them, and risen again. Now I am your own, and nothing can snatch me from your hand. For you live and reign over your holy and everlasting kingdom with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, a blessed uh, Advent, or excuse me, Lenten celebration and fast to you all. We'll see you back next time. 
for uh, the third article of the Apostles' Creed, the third person of the Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit, and the Christian Church. Until then, God bless.